Good morning. Good morning. Another day. Friday is the day. And we want to thank God so, so much because of his grace that has been sufficient for us. We want to thank God for God trusting us with another new day. And every new day is a message from God that the grace of God is sufficient for us. That God is willing to use us. Not only that, but the Lord is willing to walk with us one more day. And therefore we give glory to God even for the blessing of a new day. And we pray that this day turn to be a blessing to all of us, even as we continue to share the word of God. And therefore, welcome you in the name of Christ, even as we continue to meditate and also have an opportunity to interrogate and also dialogue and also having fellowship even through the word of God. Now, brethren, it is important that we are able, yesterday we were able to deal with the true graces that we receive even when we put ourselves into a place of worship. In other words, when we live our lives as a sacrifice before God, a sacrifice of worship, when we understand that worship is a lifestyle, when we are able, without any doubt, understand that it's about our practical life and about our healing of Jesus Christ and our focus on him that it becomes a true worship, it helps us to receive different graces. Yesterday, we talked about the grace of total surrender. And we talked about the grace of focusing and putting our eyes on our Lord Jesus Christ, who is, in fact, the source and also the reason of our worship. And therefore, this morning, I want to bring to you two uh, sources also of grace that when we are able to worship, one of the purposes that we are able to live a life of worship is that through life of worship, we are able to find the grace, uh, the grace of being able to get away get away of ourselves. In other words, it, it is like we cannot be able to worship the Lord in truth and spirit when unconsciously we are interrupting the same with our self-will. You know, God has given us as human beings even the power to reason, the power of self-will, that we have the free will that all of us have. We also have desires as human, and our nature deserves that at least we are able to fulfill some of the desires that comes on our way. By the way, also in our human nature, we worry, we fear, we get anxious. Sometimes we get angry, we become excited, we are happy, sometimes we are sad. And all the issues that are and comes around us, and all the, the in our pilgrimage of life. We are able to meet different things that challenges our lives, sometimes good times, sometimes difficult times. That's why the world is sometimes is, uh, we are high, we are low. And I appreciate that singer that he said that sometimes we find ourselves at the, at the mountains, but there are times we also find ourselves in the valleys. But you know, even when we are going through these uh, issues and experiences of life, we are supposed to always remember that we may not put them between us and our worship for God. Because our experience, by the way, the experience of sadness, experience of fear and anxiety can stand between us and we are not able to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. But have you ever known that sometimes you can even go to a place of prayer, but because of the pressures of life and something that is really bothering you, when you go there instead of praying, you find yourself thinking about the issue that is becoming worrying and maybe anxious, you are anxious about. And sometimes it becomes very disappointing that maybe sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night to pray or very early and you're sacrificing your precious sleep. But when you stand in the place of prayer, instead of praying, you find yourself thinking. That is what we call human mind and human and self, which the enemy sometimes put it between us and true worship. Now, when we are able to worship the truth, in the, 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 to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit, what the Lord gives us is the grace, that, that, that that grace is an amazing grace that we can be able to get out, to get out of our way, get out of our way. In other words, we are able to remove ourselves from the way of worship and therefore we can find God ministration and he can be able to meet our needs. And you know, brethren, sometimes if we continue to putting ourselves before God and before true worship, 
we find every time that we live in worries, in doubts, and in fears and anxieties, and we can never experience the true grace of God and the blessing that comes with worship. Let me read to you in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verses 7. Now, Peter, writing to the church, encourages the church and the people, telling them that cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. You know, Peter is saying, you don't need to continue living in anxieties for us to get out of our way that we may be able to find God and be able to worship him in truth and in spirit. Well, the purpose of worship is to help us overcome the self, the experiences of life, the interruptions of life, that we may be able to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. And therefore, brethren, for us to manage self, worship become the way in which we can be able to find the grace, the grace of helping us get away and get ourselves away so that we can be able to worship the Lord. Now, allow me also to read very fast from the book of Psalms. And I, and I think this is a very important prayer that David prays to God. And, and you can imagine how David is crying to God for help. In the book of Psalms chapter 55, and as I lead from verses uh, 1, this is what uh, David tells the Lord. He says, listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I'm distraught. In other words, what I was talking about, that David goes before God, but he calls on God to listen to him because his thoughts are really, really becoming a challenge. The fear of death, the fear of failure, the fear of dying, even the fear of losing everything that you have invested, the fear of losing your health. Sometimes it's like you go and you're waiting for reports and maybe you went through test and you're waiting for reports and you are scared and wondering that even when you go to pray, you cannot even be able to pray because of anxiety. I want to remind us there is a way in which we can be able to get ourselves out of the way and we can only get it, uh, be able to overcome ourselves and even the human nature that we have and the worries that are there just because we can be able to be able to focus on the center of our worship who is our lord jesus christ and peter encourages us can we cast all our anxieties to him because he cares for us cast that burden can you cast that fear can you cast that challenge that becoming stinging in your life can you cast it to god because he cares for you because at the end by the way verses 22 in that psalm 55 this is what uh, this is what david also says he says Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you, and he will never let the latches be shaken. Hallelujah. You can imagine he started with a lot of fear and anxieties, but as he's coming almost to the close of the psalm, he reminds himself that after he has been in God's presence, he also remembers that the wisdom to overcome self is true worship that casts away our cares and our burdens, not to any other person, but to God. Do you know why? Because he cares for us. And also David says here, because he preserves his word. And he does not allow the latches to be shaken. You know, we are not going to be shaken by the things that we go through every day. We are not going to be shaken by the anxieties of life. We are not going to be shaken by reports that causes us fear and uncertainty. We are not going to be shaken about the changing economy, even at this particular... We are not going to be shaken about the coronavirus and COVID-19. We are not going to be shaken about tomorrow. No, because we are careless. No, because we don't care. No, but because we have the ability to cast all of our burdens, all of anxieties, our anxieties to he that cares and to he that is able to preserve us, who is able to sustain us, who will never, never let the lashes be shaken. And we know with that, we can be able to know and that is the true purpose of worship. That when we go to God in worship, we are able to cast all our burdens, all our fears to him. And you know what, brethren? He is a faithful God. He is a faithful. His faithfulness is able to be passed from generation to generation. He is love and Jewish forever. And is not like a man that he should lie. And therefore, this morning, let's cast all our cares and burdens to him. For he cares for us and he will be able to sustain us and we are not going to be shaken. Grace, 
number four. Grace number four. And the grace that I want to bring to you and to introduce to you is that when we are able to worship, the purpose of worship help us to receive the grace. And this is the grace to personal sacrifice. To personal sacrifice. You know, there is no true worship without sacrifice. You know, even any kind of worship that was done in the Old Testament, it was about going into the altar, being able to offer sacrifices. That this sacrifice, why they were called sacrifices, is because people sacrificed. There were sacrifices because people sacrificed. People were willing to give their own things that were good. And remember even the instruction that God had given for even an animal to be sacrificed. Number one, that you are not supposed to sacrifice an animal that was sick, that was a weakling. Even an animal that in one way or another, that has a, 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 a in one way or even a, a chongo one that has, doesn't have two eyes. In other words, one of the work of the priest was first to be able to uh, uh, check the kind of an animal that you are bringing and they will be able to look all around. You are not even supposed to bring an animal that, uh, that was barren or even castrated. You are supposed to have brought an animal that, seriously speaking, is an animal you would want to keep. Remember, they went even ahead and to say you cannot give an animal that has two colors, meaning that you are supposed to give the best of the best from your, from your, from your frog. And therefore, that is what was given a sacrifice that was acceptable. Now, God allows us to become living sacrifices that we are not supposed to die because Christ died for us. But as we live, we are able, supposed to offer everything. And therefore, it causes us to a sacrifice. Now, when we worship the Lord, He gives, gives us the grace of allowing ourselves to sacrifice. These were the words of Jesus. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 24 and 25, He said, whoever would want to follow me, he must deny himself, take up his clothes, and follow me. You know, sometimes people make a, day, a mistake and say, take the, clo the cross of Christ. No, Jesus took his cross and was able to be faithful to death. But Jesus said, we must carry your own cross. You must be willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice your life, sacrifice your time, sacrifice your wealth, sacrifice your health, sacrifice your moment, sacrifice your precious, sacrifice. It is a call to sacrifice. Worship is a call to sacrifice. And therefore, brethren, it is important to know when we are worshiping the Lord in truth and in spirit, the purpose of worship and the reason why we worship is also that we may be able to find the grace of personal sacrifice. Allow me also to remind you that in the book of uh, uh, Psalms chapter uh, 51 and verse 17, David also realizes that he is not only supposed to give his body, but he also said, a broken spirit, God cannot in any way refuse. That even sacrificing a spirit that is humble, a spirit that is broken before the presence of God, a mind that is willing to submit, a body that is willing to be a sacrifice, a spirit that is broken before the presence of God, those personal sacrifices can only happen through a life of worship. A life that we say it, we can be able to practice our belief. Brethren, I want to encourage us that as we sacrifice, I want to say this as a parting shot. We must accept by God's grace that for us to become men and women that are able to sacrifice in this world, the word that Timothy was told by Paul that in those last days, there will be a generation who will be a rebellious generation. Men with itching ears who just want to hear what they want to hear, but not the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Men who would want just to follow their desires and fulfill them. Men who would be disobedient even to their parents. Can you see how the world is? People cannot even respect the elders. By the way, amazingly, it is like a fashion that men and women have, do not care about honor, respect, and courtesy. A world of defilement that everything and the world is being defiled every day. People killing each other like chicken. And sometimes you realize that men are carrying bitterness and anger, busting it to their brothers and sisters. The world we are living in is a world that we can only be able to live practically obeying the word of God, living a pure life, living a life of forgiveness, 
living a life of accepting to do what is right in the midst of force and long, practicing that which is honest in the midst of a corrupt world, and being able to do that which we have been called, practical living about our faith and our belief, and also submitting to our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do that, brethren, we receive the grace of personal sacrifice. And therefore, brethren, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you this wonderful uh, Friday, that even as we come to the, to, the, to the end of the week, and as we welcome the weekend, may the Lord by His grace cause you the spirit and the grace of being able to get away even from, uh, from your way and everything that you desire so that we may be able to find God who is able to give us the grace to overcome ourselves. And finally, the grace, the grace of being able by God's grace to find and to be able to give personal sacrifice. Father, we thank you for the grace you give us when we worship you. Cause us a spirit of true worship that we may be able to be truly obedient and practical Christians. And may you continue to be focused of our worship. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.